You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for Daylily, Hemerocallis fulva. Although the daylily was probably brought to North America from Eurasia to brighten the landscape around the home, it has escaped and can now be found throughout North America. In fact, some locations describe daylily as invasive. The perennial daylily tends to spread vegetatively, that is, from its tuberous root system, rather than from seed. Most of these naturalized plants do not set seed. In the spring, you can find new leaf growth rising from those tubers. The leaves, with their parallel veins, grow in an equitant arrangement. The linear leaves develop in an overlapping manner with each new leaf arising from the center of the previous leaf, growing upward in two ranks. Daylily's leaves grow only at the base of the plant and are therefore called basal leaves. After the basal leaves grow sufficiently, a stalk rises from the center of the plant and eventually reaches a height of about four feet. Flower buds develop at the top of the stalk. There's an occasional bract below the flower buds. As the first flower buds enlarge and expand, more flower buds can be seen developing on the stalk. Each flower has a peduncle, and this inflorescence is therefore a raceme. Each plant usually has two racemes of flowers. The daylily bud lengthens to about four inches and changes color to a light yellow or orange. When it's ready to bloom, the three sepals begin to open at the tip. The stamens peek out. The flower opens fully in summer's light and warmth. When open, the flower's three petals and three sepals become indistinguishable. Therefore, they are collectively called tepals. A freshly opened daylily has six stamens and one pistil. Field guides refer to the base of the flower as a narrow tube or funnel-shaped. The anthers at the tip of the filaments are covered with pollen. As the day progresses, the anthers turn dark brown, then shrivel. Pollinators visit the flowers. However, fertilization is so rare that most field guides flatly state that reproduction is only vegetative through the tubers. Daylily flowers blossom for one day and have no fragrance. Flowers remain closed early in the day, opening later when the sun is overhead. Sometimes a patch of daylilies will have double flowers with more than the expected number of six tepals. The flowers bloom from the bottom of the stalk toward the tip. At the end of the flower's daily life, the anthers are dried, the tepals become ragged, and they close up together. The flower wilts and drops off the stalk. Of course, other flowers bloom while the previous flowers are drying up and dropping off. When the flower falls away, the stalk retains a scar marking where that flower had been. The flower stalks become stiff sentinels, marking where flowers grew. The stalks turn from green to yellow. Eventually, they dry up and become brown. During fall, the dry stalks may fall over from the base of the plant. The plant's leaves begin turning from green to yellow before drying up for the winter. Next spring, leaves will grow again from the underground roots and the summer roadsides and field edges will, once again, become bright with orange daylilies. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Hemerocallis fulva, also known as daylily. Visit IdentifyThatPlant.com for more images of daylily, 
for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.